Alright guys, I've had a lot of questions about building water cooling systems lately so I thought I'd do a series of videos um, basically just going through the construction of a water cooling system right from the beginning you know, showing you what you need um, how to design it and also how to put it together uh, so this is the first video in a series um, I'm going to call this one components so just showing you the components you need to build a water cooling system uh, and basically giving you a shopping list so you know what to buy um, so component number one is the radiator so this is an XSPC radiator now they come in a whole bunch of different sizes all based on fans uh, so arguably the most common size is based on the 120 millimeter fan uh, and this is what you should go for as a beginner because um, cases that are designed for water cooling such as the Corsair Obsidian 800D like this um, the Cosmos S, the Half X uh, all designed for a triple um, 120 millimeter radiator so a radiator that fits three 120 mil fans on it so the total length is 360 millimeters so, um, so there's two different types of radiators basically uh, I mean there's, there's heaps of brands to choose from there's lots of different types I just rattle off some names Black Ice, um, XSPC like this one, Feather Exchanges um, they're all good quality and there's a lot of them out there you've just you, you've got to make a decision whether you want a silent water cooling system or whether you want an extreme performance water cooling system and you don't care about um, whether it's silent or not um, now this all depends on the radiator fins how dense they are uh, it also depends on how thick the radiator is but don't worry about that just um, look at the fins per inch so this radiator is designed for quiet function quiet fans um, so it has a low, den low density fins so it's got nine fins per inch whereas say the black ice extreme has like 30 fins per inch so it's designed for fans that blow a lot more air and they're a lot louder so next your fans um, this is really up to the user there's a lot of nice fans out there with LEDs and everything um, so if you go for the, a silent system which I think is a very important reason to get water cooling in the first place is for silence as well as the um, extra cooling and performance um, yeah so if you go for silence you need a fan that's at least you don't want to go under 40 CFM maybe 35 CFM absolute bare minimum so CFM is um, one of the important things you should look at okay so the size 120 millimeters the CFM um, so it's got to be over 40 you also want to look at the RPM and the decibels how loud the fan is anything under 20 decibels is almost inaudible um, over 20 decibels you'll start to hear it a fair bit um, so that covers fans oh, also you can do a push-pull configuration which is going to be louder or you can just put the fans on one side so yeah you can put the fans on both sides or on one side um, when choosing the fans and, and radiator you're going to have to think about how you're going to mount the radiator where you're going to mount it uh, and you might have to buy some special screws for the radiator as well it just depends what case you're using and what configuration you're doing and that's the, all the things you look at when, you, when you're designing your water cooling system um, you look at the case you're going to buy you look at reviews on it, see how other people have done it uh, and also in my water cooling guides I'll be showing you how this how a system all goes together so another thing you need is a reservoir um, this is where you fill up the water cooling system with coolant uh, in the design this needs to sit above the pump so the pump is gravity fed the coolant because most water cooling pumps can't run dry so 
as soon as you switch the system on they need to have coolant flowing through them so keep that in mind in your design reservoir above the pump there's different reservoirs to choose from this one actually mounts onto a radiator other ones mount like this inside the case um, you can see that one's got um, bands around it that's um, holding it to the side of the case this is a drive bay reservoir from EK that's a danger den reservoir by the way and I meant to say that that's a knock to your fan I know the colors of that fan are ugly um, so yeah drive bay there's also reservoirs that fit the pump inside them um, it's completely up to you what you buy I'm just telling you what components you need so um, you know just you can just write this down like radiator fans reservoir and then you go to your wherever you're going to buy it from and you look through all the different brands of each of those things and you can choose what you want um, yeah just make sure it's compatible so the sizes um, and that it's going to fit into your case all the things you've got to consider very complicated so obviously you're also going to need a pump um, when buying a pump look at the litres per minute or litres per hour um, yeah don't worry about anything else because it really starts to get complicated then just how much water it pumps per hour so this one is the Swiftec MC uh, sorry 35X um, and it pumps about a thousand litres per hour I think that's a very high performance pump uh, anything over 500 is going to be suitable unless you're going to be using you know cooling heaps and heaps of components um, so if you're going to be cooling any more than two components you're going to want a faster pump than 500 rpm so if you're just doing CPU and graphics then 500 will just cut it um, but yeah the faster the better um, the faster it is the more performance you'll get and the more upgrade path um, you have so this this is a great pump it's silent it's high performance it'll fit anywhere um, there's some bigger pumps there they are a bit faster a bit stronger but they're also a bit louder um, and I am running a lot of components so I needed those in that system now this is an old water block but it's just to give you an idea um, water blocks are another thing you need whichever components you're going to be water cooling you need a water block for um, so the components you can water cool are CPU, graphics cards, motherboard, um, hard drives, RAM the most important part and a good place to start is the CPU next I'd be moving on to the graphics cards then the motherboard then the memory and last of all the hard drive so that's in order of importance because you're going to get your most performance increase out of uh, overclocking the CPU uh, and the cooler your components are the further you can overclock them that's what water cooling is all about as well as looking awesome and being silent so of course you're going to need coolant and tubing for both cooling and tubing I use Fezzet UV um, the reason for this is I love the colors it's UV reactive it looks totally awesome and the coolant has a three year shelf life it lasts one year in your system although I've used it for more and it's been fine um, it's non-conductive which is an important buying point mainly for um, beginners I've actually tested that as well and it certainly is non-conductive don't go spilling it though try your absolute best because any foreign matter on the printed circuit board can lead to problems so you can even see the UV reactiveness of that coolant from my UV lights inside that case well I can with my bare eye I don't think the camera can pick it up so the other thing you need is fittings um, now you need to decide whether you're going to go with open barb fittings which is a lot cheaper than compression fittings it's like cheap and ugly in my opinion for example these are about three bucks um, whereas these are like ten bucks so that's the difference um, yeah so when you're going for fittings you need to 
think about size same with tubing okay so there's a lot of different sizes I'm just going to tell you to go for the the size that I use and it's the best because it's got the best flow uh, you know you can still get around corners easily it's not so thick where you can't fit it anywhere and you can't bend the tubing um, so half inch half inch internal diameter three quarter inch external diameter so when you're buying tubing you'll see OD and ID outer diameter and internal diameter so remember those write them down half inch three quarter inch now fittings they the ones you want have a quarter inch thread so write this down too uh, and they're half inch fittings so they're designed for tubing with an internal diameter of half an inch so when you're buying your fittings make sure they're all half inch otherwise they won't fit um, with a quarter inch thread otherwise they won't fit your um, you know together they won't be compatible so compression fittings ideally the way to go less leaks in my opinion look a lot better um, because with these you've got to use like um, cable ties or those compression clip things um, so and now um, elbow fittings 90 degrees 45 degrees they're not mandatory but they will shorten the amount of tubing that you need and they will improve the look of your system you know the design and the routing of the tubing will all be a lot better with, with these obviously because um, you can really minimize the amount of tubing that you use and it really makes it look great also the less tubing length you have the um, less pressure drop you'll have because um, the less restriction there is on the flow rate and the pump uh, this is just an extension fitting there's a lot of if you go for bits power fittings just seriously nothing else matches their range and their quality um, I'm just showing you this because I think it's another important fitting to have you know to get your compression fittings up out of a tight spot sometimes water blocks um, you know they might not really fit down low close to the water block for different reasons so you need to get it up out of the way also in a situation like that you need extension fittings um, and I've got extensions again just there so that's what they're for now these are totally optional okay um, if you're gonna go all out then you get these this is a temp sensor you can plug this into an extra port on a reservoir or a pump uh, quick disconnects these are from coolants basically you just twist to undo them and they only spill three two to three mils of fluid when you undo them a filter this is also from coolants to filter any crap out of your loop uh, this is important a syringe or something to help you fill the system um, and then also if you're going to be want to want control over your fans and also a vis visual display of their RPM and whether they're working or not fan control is a good thing for that you can also just plug them directly into the PSU or to your motherboard in which case you can also control and monitor them um, so other things you're going to have to think about is power to your pump um, you know in the in your cabling design and things and power to the fans uh, and you also might want some lighting which to light it all up so that um, you can actually see it makes it look beautiful it's an LED strip so obviously this is the finished product a nice example of what's possible and I'll just quickly show you this water box as well I know it's a bit dark but I've got lots of videos of these two systems on my channel so you can check those out alright I better stop there that's 15 minutes thanks for watching guys